Yesterday, we experienced two terrible attacks. It's November 2023. Emergency services rush to a primary school where three children have just been stabbed. With three young children, an adult female and an adult male. The news spreads that the suspect is a homeless Algerian immigrant and people start gathering near his scene. May have been an asylum seeker, we don't know. Just absolute disgrace, absolute disgrace. But as the evening fell, it turned grim. This is an unusual sight for Ireland. Some people decided that the best way to respond to this terrible attack was to take to the streets of Dublin, burn our city, attack its businesses and assault our Gardaí. The images of looting and arson attacks show just a fraction of a much larger public pushback against near record numbers of migrants arriving at Ireland's shores. We got an extra 500 people just into the town, the town itself. It affects the downstream businesses, the small cafes, the small pubs who are really struggling right now. But until recently, this kind of anti-immigration rhetoric was taboo. The Irish themselves have fled hardship and hunger and they immigrated around the world. This history is an important part of their national consciousness and it explains in part why they have typically had relative positive views on migration. But that is changing. What caused this dramatic pivot in Ireland? And what are the underlying problems? This is Ireland's migration crisis with hindsight. Summer is around the corner and you might have plans for the holiday, but what if you cross the border and that series that you were looking forward to finally watch is not available in that country? Luckily, CyberGhost VPN, the sponsor of today's video, has the answer. I open it here and then select a country, say the United States. Then I click the start button and now I can access all content that's available in the US. From streaming services to the news and sporting events, it's that easy. CyberGhost also lets me browse completely anonymously and they protect my data while connecting to public Wi-Fi or while making online purchases. With one license, you can use CyberGhost VPN on seven devices, meaning that you can share this with six of your friends. They are trusted by 38 million people worldwide and they have an excellent Trustpilot rating. Through my link in the description, you can get a 83% discount and just pay $2.03 per month. They even give you four months for free. In case you change your mind, they offer a 45-day money-back guarantee. If you think that this could be for you, click the link and consider their offer. And now, back to the video. Ireland is a small country of only 5 million people, but anywhere around 50 to 80 million people in the world have full or partial Irish heritage. In the United States, 36 million Americans claim Irish as their primary ethnicity, which constitutes 11% of the entire population. Famous Irish Americans include Henry Ford, Kurt Cobain, and John F. Kennedy. But in Canada, this percentage is even higher, with 14% of the population having Irish ancestry. And Australia tops it off, with 30% of their population, or 7 million people, being of Irish descent. The Irish diaspora is the reason why Gaelic games are played around the world, and why the Chicago River turns green every March. In the mid-1800s, the Irish population was much larger and peaked at 8.5 million people. But a disaster was about to happen. A type of fungus was causing potato crops to fail across Europe. And in Ireland, this led to an unparalleled food crisis. It lasted four years and drove Ireland into a nightmare of hunger and disease. One million people died of starvation and another one million left the country. By 1900, the Irish population had nearly halved to 4.4 million people. And by this time, 40% of all Irish-born people were living abroad. Ireland didn't industrialize as fast as other Western European countries. And in the first decades of the 20th century, they were still largely an agrarian society. Between 1949 and 1956, their real national income rose by only 8%, where in 
whereas the average European increase was 40%. The Irish population now counts as only 3 million people, and nearly half a million of them left the country to find work abroad. Most countries uh, send out oil or iron, steel or gold, but Ireland has had only one export and that's been people. But this was about to change. This image of Ireland as a relatively undeveloped country stands in sharp contrast with the image you might have of Ireland today. In the 1990s, a period of economic boom started. Just look at this chart. This is the GDP of the UK, and this is that of Ireland until 1990. That's when a shift occurred. Ireland began growing rapidly, and by 2018, they had a GDP per capita of over $60,000, much higher than the UK's $38,000. They transformed from a relatively poor country by Western European standards into one of the world's richest. Ireland's quality of life drastically increased, and in 2005, they ranked number one in The Economist's Quality of Life Index, above Switzerland and Norway. This impressive economic growth was mostly fueled by direct foreign investment. Dublin's city centre now boasts gleaming new office towers, and marquee tech giants like Google and Apple have established massive European headquarters in Ireland. But statistics can be deceiving. A publication from the IMF this year placed Ireland as the country with the second highest GDP per capita in the world, only behind Luxembourg, with well over $100,000. But their average income, in reality, is closer to $48,000. So Ireland's prosperity is not as rosy as these statistics make it out to be, but they were now one of Europe's most prosperous nations, and this led to a historic reversal. Now, the number of people seeking refugee status has increased dramatically in the last few years, and now the facilities put in place to deal with them are just unable to cope. If we have room for them, take them, because they're hungry and they're afraid. For centuries, Ireland had more people moving out of their country than that they were coming in. But their economic growth and their welcoming attitude made them a popular destination. On this graph, you can see that the number of new arrivals grew steadily and even continued after the markets crashed in 2008. In this period, the number of foreign-born nationals increased from 10 to 20 percent, and many Irish had a positive opinion of this development. Could you ever imagine 20 years ago in Ireland that we'd be experiencing this right now? Absolutely not, and I'm delighted. When I moved down to Limerick about 10 years ago, there was pretty much only Limerick people living here, and it was great to see African people, people from all over Europe, mixing together and new shops opening, new food, and it's been great. In polls, it shows that most people viewed immigration as an important factor for economic progress. In 2015, at the height of the European migrant crisis, a poll of 12 European nations showed that 88% of people showed a degree of sympathy towards Syrian refugees arriving in Ireland. This was the highest figure of all countries that participated. Most people agreed with the government's spending to help these refugees. To show our solidarity with the refugee movement, um, to welcome people yeah, to yeah. our country. We would really like the government to take action on bringing far more than 4,000. We can take more than 4,000. And two-thirds of the population wasn't concerned that these refugees were putting extra pressure on public services like education, health and housing. But in 2022 and 2023, the number of new arrivals became the highest in years. Last year, 140,000 immigrants arrived, of which 42,000 came from Ukraine. Ireland has taken in more than 25,000 Ukrainians, and many local communities are happy to have them. We look after approximately 500 Ukrainians in the Fingal area. Generosity and hospitality. Ireland has taken in 41,000 Ukrainians already. There weren't enough mattresses or airbeds. A tent village installed at an Irish army base after the country officially ran out of state accommodation. A similar facility nearby is at capacity. This one will open soon for almost 1,000 Ukrainians. Since Russia's invasion, a total of 100,000 Ukrainian refugees have arrived in Ireland. 
which is amongst the highest per capita in the EU. It had long been a taboo to speak negatively about these immigrants, but the arrival of large numbers of Ukrainians in 2022 caused us to change. We were um, just under a thousand people, yeah. and we got an extra 500 people just into the town, the town itself. We have 40% of our accommodation is gone. We have the same issues. We lost all of our hotels. We, tourism was our bread and butter in Karsavine. If you take 40% of the spend power off the streets, it affects the downstream businesses, the small cafes, the small pubs, the small restaurants. Our town is affected, our businesses are affected. But equally, immigrants are, no, are, are struggling people that need a place to live, like many Irish did in previous generations. It's not their fault. They didn't make the decisions. They weren't the ones that didn't come consult with the community. That year, only 4% of people felt that immigration was a concern. But one year later, that number had risen to 29%, making it the largest issue amongst voters, followed by housing and healthcare. And it's important to understand that all these issues are connected. There's a massive shortage of housing. They need a quarter of a million more homes and homelessness is at a record high. For many people, it has become impossible to buy a house or to even find affordable rental property. On top of this, Ireland is amongst the most expensive countries in the EU, with a household expenditure that's 46% higher than the EU average. Other services, most notably hospitals, are also already under strain. Many doctors have long waiting lists, and nearly 3% of Irish people have unmet medical needs. Small towns are overwhelmed by migrants, adding to a feeling of insecurity. So you have groups of 10 and 15 IPAs standing around in groups. Now, let it be said, if that was 10 or 15 Irish men standing around in groups, I would be intimidated. But you're, when you're walking past a group of men and they're saying something to you in a different language and you don't know what they're saying, it's obviously it's very, very intimidating. In Dublin, 10 cities have sprung across the city due to a lack of available accommodation. And people are now taking to the streets to demand action from their representatives. Much of this public pushback was civilized and peaceful, but some people chose another way. In November 2018, a hotel was set on fire that was earmarked to house 100 asylum seekers. And since then, 27 fires were set at properties across Ireland that were rumored to house refugees. Most of those happened after November 2023. In Dublin alone, there were nine reported incidents of arson since early 2023. But the event that captured the world's attention happened late last year. These were the worst riots in Dublin's history. It's also important to note that this is an extremity. Most protests are civilized and peaceful, but also passionate and emotional. I let them know we're standing together. Immigration is likely to play a significant role in the national elections that are held in the first months of 2025. And this has never happened before in Irish history. The Irish government has failed to address some of the root causes of these tensions, like the shortage of housing and the rise of living expenses. And they are now facing the uncomfortable truth that their acceptance of migrant communities, which is so deeply rooted in their national identity, has limits. But migrants are also necessary. This graph shows the talent shortages in Ireland from 2010 to 2023. And you can see that last year, 81% of employers had difficulty finding skilled talent. In the Irish healthcare system, 43% of physicians are trained in foreign countries. Most are from Pakistan, Sudan and the United Kingdom. These industries are in desperate need of more educated staff, which is not always locally available. And the Irish youth is still disproportionately thinking about leaving the country. Of the age group 18 to 24, as much as 70% is thinking about emigrating, and most of them have a higher education. But Ireland is waking up, 
And they're also seeing countries like Sweden, which have long served as an ideological model for Irish politicians, are facing a much more violent backlash of uncontrolled migration. And I made a separate video about this, but first, don't forget to click on the description link to get a special discount CyberGhost VPN is granting to our channel's viewers. This application will protect your data while you browse and gives you full access to all blocked content on the internet for just $2.03 per month. It is totally risk-free, so check it out. Link in the description. And now, if you want to see my video about Sweden, click on the video on the left, or else feel free to check out the video on the right, which YouTube recommends for your next watch.